The alleged alien abduction of Krista Tilton is an account that is highly detailed, thought-provoking and bizarre in equal measure. That it took place in Dulce, New Mexico, an area long rumored to house an underground alien base only adds to the intrigue. During the summer of 1987, Krista Tilton was becoming increasingly bothered by several hours that she simply couldn't recall from one night in July of that year. She knew that something significant had taken place, but could not remember any of the details. It became the source of such frustration that she sought out hypnotic regression in an attempt to reveal the events of those missing hours. Under regression, she recalled some shocking details. She remembered two small aliens dragging her by the arms from her bed across her bedroom and then to a strange metallic craft. Then she would recall that she was rendered unconscious by her extraterrestrial captors. Her next memory was of waking up on a strange table. She was disorientated and confused, but she could tell that whatever vehicle she was in, it was moving. An alien humanoid different from the creatures who had abducted her and who Tilton would refer to as her guide approached her and motioned that she should sit up. She did so and the figure handed her a drink, indicating that she should drink it. She did so and the disorientating feeling immediately left her. Tilton would recall that the craft came to a sudden stop and that the guide led her to a now open doorway. When she stepped outside, she was on a dark hillside with the only light coming from a cavern in front of them. It was in this direction that the guide led her. The closer they got, Krista made out a man holding a heavy duty machine gun who was dressed in what she described as a red military jumpsuit. They continued past the man and into the cavern, which was in fact a huge opening into a tunnel in the side of a mountain. They continued on into the tunnel for several minutes before eventually coming to another checkpoint. Here, another man dressed in the same red military uniform as the man at the entrance of the tunnel was on duty. As the guide and guard spoke, Krista looked around. She noticed how futuristic everything appeared, seeing multiple computer screens, flashing buttons, and moving cameras that watched the entire area. She also noticed something like a large groove next to where they stood that appeared to be some kind of rail track. She followed the track into the distance, seeing that beyond it was a huge hallway that seemed to branch off into other rooms that were beyond her sight. Then, before she could see anything else, a vehicle arrived on the track and her guide was ushering her into it. After several moments, the rail cart lurched forward and took them deep into the mountain. This journey seemed to last a considerable time before the vehicle came to a stop at another checkpoint. She was instructed to leave the rail cart and step onto what looked like a large weighing scale. As soon as she settled her weight on the device, a cacophony of sounds accompanied by a flurry of flashing lights began around her. This lasted several moments before coming to a sudden stop. Then, out of one of the computer devices around the scales, a card emerged. The guard took the card, punched two holes in it, and handed it to her telling it it was her internal identification. Her guide then instructed her to follow him. She did so first down a long corridor and then into what appeared to be a strangely shaped elevator. The doors closed and the elevator descended at great speed before coming to an abrupt halt. When the doors opened, two more guards awaited them. Her guides led her past the guards and down another long corridor. As she walked, she caught glances of the rooms that went off on either side of her. Each was a hive of activity, with most filled with screens and flashing devices. She also noticed that despite this corridor being well lit, she could see no light strips or bulbs. It appeared as though the light was somehow coming from the walls themselves. Interestingly or not, many people who claim to have been inside an extraterrestrial craft have said the same thing about their exteriors. The hallway suddenly opened out into a massive open plan type space with cubicles all around her and passageways stretching in all directions, some leading to offices, other to elevators. People and alien creatures were all around her, going about whatever business they had to attend to. In the middle of this open space were several 
disc-shaped crafts. As she watched the activity unfolding around her, she followed her guide onto another elevator. However, as the doors closed, she began to get an uneasy feeling. Her guide seemingly sensed this and informed her that as long as she stayed with him, she would not be in any danger. Despite this reassurance, when the elevator came to a stop and they arrived at their destination, the ominous feeling that something bad was about to happen only intensified. Even the guards now seemed menacing. As the guide spoke to the guards, Krista was handed a bundle and told to change her clothing. She did so and unfolded the clothing she had been given, realizing it was some kind of hospital gown, only it fastened at both sides. As she was changing her clothes, the two military guards saluted the guide, making her realize that he was in a position of authority here, even apparently over members of the United States military. Her guide then motioned for her to come forward and asked her to step onto another weighing scales type platform. She did so, and just like before, all manner of devices and computers came to life with a burst of sound and color. This time, however, she could hear a strange frequency that caused her significant discomfort in her ears, which only stopped when the process ceased. Her guide then led her down yet another long corridor. The bad feeling persisted, especially when the smell of something she could only liken to formaldehyde hit her nostrils. The smell she recalled from her time working as a nurse when she was young, and one that only intensified the further along the corridor she walked. This corridor suddenly opened out into a large room. As Krista walked into this room, she could see there were several large tanks, each around four feet tall, each with several tubes and a mechanical arm attached to them. As she walked past each one, she went to peer inside. Her guide, though, pulled her back, informing her that it would, quote, complicate matters if she was to see inside the containers. She was quickly led out of the room along another short corridor and then into what appeared to be a large laboratory. She looked around the room, noticing medical-like devices and furnishings. Then in the middle of the room, she noticed a gray alien, similar to the two creatures who had grabbed her from the bed. A feeling of fear went through her once more, even more so when she heard the clatter of metal on metal, a sound she recalled from her nursing days as instruments being prepared for surgery. At this point, her guide told her to make her way to the table in the middle of the room. She refused, now almost paralyzed with fear. Now, however, the reassuring look on the guide's face was gone, and in its place was a stern, threatening appearance. She was told it would be much easier if she just did as she was asked. She simply stood there, frozen to the spot as another man entered the room, this one dressed as a surgeon would. Attached to him was a card with two holes in it, exactly the same as the one she had been given previously. The guide walked over to the surgeon, spoke to him briefly, and then turned to Krista, telling her he would wait outside. Krista's mind began to go into shock. She recalled how cold the room suddenly felt, and hearing the doctor asking for help, which caused another gray alien to appear in the room. With that, everything went black. Her next memory is of waking up laying on an operating table. Her first sight was two black almond shapes, which she quickly realized were the eyes of one of the gray aliens peering closely into her face. Then she felt a sudden sharp pain in her torso, noticing that the surgeon had stuck a device into her side Within seconds, the pain subsided and her entire upper body was completely numb. The surgeon and the gray aliens worked quickly and efficiently, although Krista didn't know what procedure they were undertaking. Following this, she was brought down from the table and with no apparent after effects of the operation, she was told to go into a side room where she would find her clothes. By the time she had dressed and returned, the guide was standing talking with the surgeon. She was led out of the room and into an awaiting rail vehicle. They traveled a short distance before the rail car came to a stop. She and her guide got out and walked into another large room. It was here that Krista would witness the most unsettling and chilling thing of all. As soon as she entered the chamber, all she could see 
were rows upon rows of glass medical chambers, each lit up in a neon type glow, and each contained a human person. They appeared like authentic waxworks, but Krista knew somehow that they were real people who were in some kind of suspended animation and were very much alive. Confronted with this final spectacle, Krista's mind began to shut down somewhat. Essentially, she was going into shock. The next thing she realized, she was heading out of the facility on one of the rail carts before she boarded one of the disc-shaped objects. Then she awoke in her home with no memory of the apparent journey there from the mountain base. Finally, in her regression session, she would reveal that she had a feeling deep inside her that these types of encounters had happened to her numerous times previously, and that she was part of some kind of long-term human-alien experimental program. If Krista Tilton's claims are genuine, and she was abducted by aliens and taken to an apparent human-alien run facility deep under the ground of Dulce, New Mexico, what does that say for the UFO and alien question? Just how involved are these apparent government agencies and what is their agenda and end goal? Just what might be taking place right under our collective noses and what might it mean for humanity as a whole?